In this lesson, we continue our exploration of paracyclic reactions, covering the fundamentals of electrocyclic reactions. Electrocyclic reactions are perhaps the simplest form of paracyclic reactions. An electrocyclic reaction is the formation of a ring via the reorganization of pi electrons from a single conjugated pi system. In an electrocyclization, a new sigma bond is formed between the two ends of the pi system. The reverse reaction, which breaks open a ring via the same flow of electrons, is also considered an electrocyclic reaction. Here we see an example of cis 135 hexatriene cyclized to give 1,3-cyclohexadiene. As with all paracyclic reactions, the electrons flow in a cyclic manner in a single concerted mechanistic step. The equilibrium of an electrocyclic reaction is greatly influenced by the size of the ring that would be formed. Formation of unstrained 5- and 6-atom rings generally favors the cyclic structure as seen in the first reaction. This is due to the added stability introduced by replacing a weak pi bond with a stronger sigma bond. Formation of smaller 4-atom rings often favors the acyclic structure. The angle strain introduced by the ring outweighs the stability gained from the stronger sigma bond. Here, we see 1,3-butadiene cyclized to give cyclobutene. In this case, the acyclic diene is preferred at equilibrium. At the orbital level, electrocyclizations occur via rotation at the ends of the HOMO of the pi system. The two ends must combine in phase in order to create a new bonding interaction. This in phase overlap is called a symmetry allowed process. The two ends of the HOMO can rotate in two relative directions. In a conrotatory ring closure, the two ends rotate in the same direction, both clockwise or both counterclockwise. Conrotatory ring closure occurs when the HOMO is asymmetric. In the example, we see a simplified depiction of an asymmetric HOMO reacting with conrotatory ring closure. Each orbital rotates 90 degrees in the same direction, bringing the blue orbital lobes together, representing an in-phase overlap. In a disrotatory ring closure, the two ends rotate in opposite directions, one clockwise and the other counterclockwise. Disrotatory ring closure occurs when the HOMO is symmetric. In the example, we see a simplified depiction of a symmetric HOMO reacting with disrotatory ring closure. Each orbital rotates 90 degrees, but now in opposite directions, again bringing the blue orbital lobes together to give an in-phase overlap. The mode of ring closure is important because it determines the stereochemistry of the products of the reaction. Let's take a look at two examples that demonstrate the entire process. In the first example, we see trans-trans 2,4-hexadiene undergo electrocyclization under thermal conditions. When analyzing an electrocyclization, we need to make certain the two ends of the pi system are close together. Rotate any sigma bonds necessary to bring the two ends together. In this case, we see that the two methyl groups on the ends of the conjugated pi system are oriented outward. The reaction forms 3,4-dimethylcyclobutene, a disubstituted ring. We can see that the two methyl groups in the product have a trans stereochemical relationship. The product stereochemistry can be determined with an analysis of the symmetry allowed mode of ring closure. In this example, the reactant is a conjugated diene having four pi electrons and four pi molecular orbitals. Under thermal conditions, the molecule is in a ground state, which means that psi1 and psi2 are both filled. This makes psi2 the homo and psi3 the lumo. Remember that with electrocyclic reactions, we only consider the HOMO. Psi2 is an even-numbered pi molecular orbital, which means it's asymmetric, and electrocyclization with an asymmetric HOMO requires conrotatory ring closure. Here we see a simplified molecular orbital depiction of an asymmetric HOMO. The methyl groups attached to the ends of the pi system are drawn pointing outward, mimicking the orientation seen in the skeletal structure of the reactant. When the two ends are rotated 90 degrees in the same direction, the two methyl groups end up on opposite faces of the newly formed ring, giving them a trans-stereochemical relationship. In the second example, we again see trans-trans-2,4-hexadiene undergo electrocyclization, but now under photochemical conditions. As before, we make certain that the two ends of the pi system are close together, which again places the two methyl groups on the ends of the conjugated pi system pointing outward. The reaction again gives 3,4-dimethylcyclobutene, but now forms the cis stereoisomer. Under photochemical conditions, the molecule will be in the most stable excited state, lifting one electron from psi2 to psi3. 
This makes Psi 3 the homo and Psi 4 the lumo. Psi 3 is an odd numbered pi molecular orbital, which means it's symmetric, and electrocyclization with a symmetric homo requires disrotatory ring closure. Here we see a simplified molecular orbital depiction of a symmetric homo. The two methyl groups attached to the ends of the pi system are drawn pointing outward, again mimicking the orientation seen in the skeletal structure of the reactant. When the two ends are rotated 90 degrees in opposite directions, the two methyl groups end up on the same face of the newly formed ring, giving them a cis-stereochemical relationship.